Hey hi everyone, this is Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Today I'm going to talk about this measure called R squared, which no doubt you've heard about. Now I find that students when they first start with stats place far too much emphasis on this R square measure. They think that to get a great model they must come up with an R square of 0.9 or higher. Recall that R square is on a scale from 0 to 1, 1 meaning that it's a perfect fit. I want to explain to you that a high R square could actually mean that you've got a poor model, far from being a good model. First I want you to review the uses of regression. Now why do you build a regression model? Well there are two reasons for building a regression model. One is to examine the relationship between the IV and the DV. We do this by interpreting the coefficients. So with the coefficients we can measure the sensitivity of changes in DV with unit change in the IV. Another use is to use the model to make predictions. So given a value of the, I, of the IVs, what does the model predict to be the D value of the DV? Now, a high value for the R square means that the model would, is useful for prediction, but not necessarily for interpreting the coefficients. So if your task is for prediction, then you by all means try to achieve a high R square. But if your aim is for to predict to, to interpret the coefficients, your emphasis is not so much on the R square, but more on the signs and magnitudes of the coefficients using theory, whether it be psychology or economics or engineering theory, to come up with a model where you choose a set of IVs predicted by your theory that should help predict the DV. Now I've got example data here to show you that the R square can be misleading using the R square can be misleading in selecting a final model. So here I've got uh, social survey data on factors that can influence uh, your well-being. So the DV is the degree of happiness. Let's fit a regression model. Analyze regression linear happy in the dependent variable box. In the independent variable box we can select, let's see, age, say, uh, what else should we, are you married? Let's put those two in. So we're doing a multiple regression because there are two IVs. Alright, we'll look at the R square, 0.196. Let's see if we can make that higher. Analyze regression linear. Let's put in another one. Education. What else? Well, maybe time spent in leisure. Let's put those two in. Okay. What's R squared done now? So it's gone up from 0.196 to 0.199. Let's see if we can make it go even higher. Analyze regression linear. Let's see. Okay, putting social and TV in there. Okay, now the R square has jumped up to 0.366, looking great. If we're looking at just the R square. Now let's now let's uh, put in this IV here called Lou, which means the uh, average number of times the person goes to the Lou the washroom a day. Let's put that in. Well, the R square has now gone up to point is now 0.369 so the introduction of the LU has pushed up the R square by approximately 1% uh, which seems a bit absurd if you think about it. I wouldn't expect the number of times you visit the LU to 
influence your happiness. So I want to point out here is that the disadvantage of R square is that if you put in rubbish as IVs, uh, the R square will tend to stay the same or increase. It will not decrease. So in other words, you're putting any old rubbish into your model. The more and more rubbish you put in, the R square is just going to be pushed up arbitrarily towards one. And that, if you're looking at R square, will kind of give you a kind of peace of mind that you are building a great model. But uh, if we look at the coefficients here, we can see several of them are not significant. Age, level of education, important to have a hobby, another two there. You see, by including more and more IVs in your model, you are making the model more susceptible to what is called multicollinearity, which is a problem. It means that there's a high degree of linear relationship among the IVs, and that means that your pr these coefficients one effect is that the coefficients will become very unstable. And that in effect means that the the actual numbers here are dubious. So your co coefficients are, can't be relied upon so much. Okay, so to recap at this point, I point out the danger of using high R square. R square, high R square does not mean that your model is necessarily good. While it may be okay for prediction, coefficients of interpretation may be may be spoiled. This R square has a drawback in that the more more IVs you include in the model, this R square will be pushed up closer and closer to one, making you think that your model is improving. If you do come up with a model of a very high R square then pers and you are really lucky or there is something else that is wrong with your model. Depending on the subject field, what is high in terms of R square, what is a high value for the R square, it really depends on the subject area. For the for psychology and social sciences, you know high R square won't be as high as for some of the say physical sciences such as engineering because there's just a lot more uncertainty in in dealing with uh, say people rather than uh, with machines right so now I've pointed out the drawback of r, r squared what about this thing called adjusted r square well adjusted r square does not have the drawback of R square. So historically R square came first then followed by adjusted R square. And the difference is that adjusted R square also measures the same measure of what R square measures, so it's on a scale of zero to one. But adjusted R square penalizes for the inclusion of irrelevant IVs. So if you put in rubbish IVs, the R adjusted R square will fall. In fact if you look at it, it's smaller than R square figure here. R square for this model is 0.369, for adjusted R square is 0.275. A rule of thumb is that if the difference between R square and adjusted R square is greater than 2 or 3 percent, it suggests that there is a, you've included irrelevant IVs. But we can test for that formally using things such as a t-test that you can see down here, or we could even use the f-test to test a subset of the IVs, the coefficients in the IVs. So for measuring the goodness of fit, if we're going to use the R square measure, then for the multiple regression, we're better off reporting the adjusted R square. But the fact still remains, we're not after necessarily a model with massively high R square, even adjusted R square. If our purpose is to explain the relationships between the IV and the DV. Okay, so 
Next time when you've come up with a model where the coefficients make sense and the conditions for the regression are satisfied, then don't be too concerned if your R-square, adjusted R-square, doesn't seem so high.